pleasure to introduce the guest speaker, a man who you all know, a man who is a survivor of the Great Depression, of the a Second World War RAF veteran, and at 91, he is an activist for the poor and for the preservation of social democracy. His experience spans almost 100 years, a period where the working class in our struggle through labor movements and other progressive movements actually introduced a welfare state that lifted generations out of poverty and into security. He's just completed a speaking tour uh, all across England, where he brought MPs from the Labour Party to their feet, as he brought many others to their feet on that tour. He has articles in newspapers like The Guardian that have been shared tens of thousands of times on social media. He wrote the article this year, I Will Wear a Poppy for the Last Time. It's one example you can find on The Guardian's website. He's authored numerous books about Britain during the Great Depression, about the Second World War, about post-war austerity, and he lives just outside Toronto in Canada and in Yorkshire, and tonight, we are very pleased to be a sponsor with the Put Food in the Budget campaign to introduce Harry Leslie Smith to you for the Canadian launch of his book, Harry's Last Stand. Give Harry a warm, warm welcome. Thank you. Guys, one of the questions I really wanted to ask you and maybe you could share with us is, why are you doing this? I mean, you could be you, you said you, you were going to, I think it's in Portugal that you were going to buy a place in. Yeah, I was going like, to retire there. Yeah, why? why I put my feet up. Why are you here doing this? I, I'm doing it because they, 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 they buggered my retirement up, actually, with, <laughs> with, with, with the uh, 08 uh, banking collapse, and I got so bloody mad, I, I just. Uh, felt I couldn't sit on my ass any longer, and I, I, I had to fight these people who were, were, were uh, they ruined the lives of millions of people with the banking collapse, and yet no one got uh, any punishment. The, in fact, the banks got their bonuses just as usual, you know. I wouldn't have given them a bloody nickel. But uh, that, that, that really got to me. Uh, and I, I, then I, I really got down to some research. And uh, I spent considerable time investigating past governments and, and present governments. And uh, anyone that uh, I, I felt could uh, maybe give me an answer to how we got into this mess. Uh, unfortunately, th there isn't any real answer except the fact that the public were uh, uh, intended to not be vigilant. They, they were not watching and, and listening to what the government was saying they were going to do. Uh, they just let them it go. And you, you can't do that with any government because they, they, they'll, uh, they haven't got your concerns in mind, that's for sure. Thank you, Mr. Smith. You, um, you've now lived through two different financial meltdowns. What was the first financial meltdown like compared to the one that we just recently went through? And how do you see, like, what do you see as some of the similarities and some of the differences between the two? Well, the, the first meltdown, of course, was uh, something which uh, it happened just after the Second World War. Th things were not uh, as they should have been. And then, of course, there was the Spanish flu, which came along and killed 200 million people. But uh, also, there was no no mercy on the workers even then because most of the work in the north of England anyway was for mining and the mines were owned by rich people of course and the rich people couldn't give a damn whether the mines were safe or not and uh, how much the, the amount they paid was hardly enough to survive on. The, uh, the, this present 
business came into power when we allowed them to bring in austerity. And uh, it's reached a stage where all the Western governments work, and I think read from the, the same hymn sheet, because when, when Britain does something, it's not for many months before it slides over to Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and then there's a lull until they need to get a little more money out of the poor people, so they bring a little more austerity in. And that's been going on for so long, and the public have just sat back and taken it, you see. They didn't get up when the first authority, uh, austerity came through and say, enough is enough, you know. As, as, uh, as citizens, uh, we have that right to say, what do you mean austerity? Why should we suffer? And not the, the people who are pulling in all the money, you know. Your, your mother had a, 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 you spoke in a book about her and she said she had a very um, strong influence on maybe why it is that you've made it through those two financial, make these two now financial meltdowns. What were you think were some of the things that helped you make it through to, to, to be here where you are speaking to us today? Quite frankly, I, th I think it was just a miracle. <laughs> I mean, if, if you got ill uh, when I was a kid, uh, that was too bad. You had to rely on uh, home med remedies or, uh, or good old-fashioned genes. You, you hoped that you got a good set, you know. I think, um, I think you've said it's important to speak to young people. What's the most important thing that you think that the younger folks in the audience should take away from your words tonight? I think they have to really take more interest in politics. They have to look behind statements which politicians hand out daily in the newspapers and on TV. and think to themselves now, is what the, 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 this man is saying is good for us, the ordinary people, or is he just spouting platit golden platitudes to, to, to just make us not take too much notice so that they can bring in laws which are injurious to us and not to them. Right. Okay. Thank you. You saw, I think Malachi kicked us off with some wonderful um, spoken word. And um, you, when you came in, there was a number of volunteers that were at the front front desk. And there's a number of um, wonderful human beings that helped to organize the Put Food in the Budget campaign. And you're here today speaking on behalf of the campaign of Put Food in the Budget. What, what words would you say to these volunteers um, to encourage them to, uh, to keep moving forward with the work that they're doing? I, uh, it's a rather difficult question for me because I, I wasn't even aware of the group, to be quite honest, uh, because I, I returned from Britain two weeks ago and uh, I'd been chasing all over Britain uh, for the BBC and, and the radios and, and, uh, and making movies. And uh, my, my God, I, 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 I mean, you, you, you can imagine that uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm still in shock, <laughs> you know. I mean, uh, I... Um, I was in second thoughts whether to take up this project in Britain, quite honestly, because I thought uh, I've got the money to uh, to take a chance. <laughs> 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 but happily, I did, and, and I must say the British people do pay more attention to politics than uh, than we do in Canada. There's a lot of apathy in Canada. They, they think. 
oh, it's not going to benefit me, so I can't do anything about it. But it's also wrong because you can. You can make sure that everyone you know goes out to vote. And not if you don't like who they, who's on the ballot, spoil the ballot. Just say you don't like any of them. And spoil ballots are counted just as well as the others. So if, if the government at the counting day find that there are more people who don't like them than like them, Surely to God, they've got to do something about it because they're, they're going to get uh, a real blast from the public, you know. The, this is part of uh, a speech that I, I wrote for the CBC who intervie interviewed me when I was in England. They, the CBC asked if they could interview me, and I said yes. And I was living in Meltham in the north of England. And uh, they sent a taxi at a cost of 400 pounds, which is like $600 or $700, to take me to a studio so they could record my statement, my, my uh, interview. And uh, afterwards, he said it was a wonderful speech and they were going to publish it and what have you. But uh, I guess someone in the CBC looked at it and they said, we can't say that on CBC. <laughs> so I, uh, they, they said they'd put it on their, uh, some web page or something, but... Uh, I, I wanted to get it out to the public. But part, part of it, I, I, sa I said to them, I said, somehow Canada lost her way. And now there is very little that makes us unique among nations. Because we have reduced our citizens to consumers rather than active participants in democracy. And, and that, that was just part of the speech. But uh, I, I feel it says a lot. And it also indicates what I've been saying here tonight, that we all have to pull our weight. We all have to get behind it. Otherwise, we will end up worse than we are. In fact, uh, George, George Osborne, the, uh, the minister of... Uh, the, 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 the minister of the government's uh, financial pe people said just yesterday that if they win the election in May this coming year, they have another six, 60 or, or Sorry, but 60%. sixty percent more austerity to uh, to to put out to the British people. So you know, if it goes to the Brits, it comes right here directly. So uh, the Brits have their work cut out too. They have to uh, get a new government as well. The the. The, 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 uh, the Liberals in, uh, in Britain uh, have, uh, have a good chance and, and they are fairly reliable, whereas we don't have anyone. Sorry about the interruption. If the Brits are so much more politically active than us, then why is it that they're leading the charge in all this austerity? They don't what? If the Brits are leading the charge as far as political activism is concerned, why is it that they're leading on austerity measures? Because uh, they, they, there's a much larger percentage of people who are ha happily getting uh, enough money to keep them happy as opposed to the 
the ones who have to uh, be penalized because they are poor. And that's all austerity is, uh, punishing the poor at the expense of the, uh, the, the upper crust. One more question. I'm just wondering, what did you learn on your speaking tour? What did you learn on your speaking tour? Uh, what did I learn on my speaking tour? Now, well, let me think. I, I, I learned a lot of uh, perseverance. I, I learned uh, that I had to be stronger than I actually was because I thought writing a book was a simple matter. You wrote the book, you sent it to the publishers, they published it, and you just waited for the money. <laughs> <laughs> but, but apparently it's not the case, believe me. They, they, they're making me work bloody hard for them. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Thank you.